Welcome back. Now, which of us would not like a little more peace in our lives? I am here with Cynthia Oraduba, the CEO of Missing Peace Consulting. Cynthia, thank you so much for being with us. And I love your play on words. So Missing Peace, P-E-A-C-E, is something that I think we can all identify with. You come from a very different background, though. When I think of your background, I think of Jerry Maguire and Show Me the Money, right? <laughs> so you were a talent agent, and yes. that is hardly a peaceful existence. <laughs> and most of us in California can relate to that. So how do you make the leap from talent agent to bringing peace and also mm -hmm. passion to other people's lives? Well, you know, it's really interesting because... Most people would think that being an agent, there's not peace, but there is peace when you close a deal okay. and when you close the right deal for your client. And sometimes, not even just closing the right deal for the client, but getting your client in the position that they're not needy for the job, but they're going in because they know that they have something to give. And so, through this experience, there's peace in that. So I really did get a lot of peace out of it and a lot of satisfaction. But one of the things that I noticed is that what was really rewarding to me was watching my clients grow, grow in their craft, grow as individuals, and grow in their relationships. And what I did not realize I was coaching them back then. That's what I'm understanding. I was coaching them then, yeah. but I didn't know the name for it. I was just instinctively working with them. Mm -hmm. And many, many years later, I found out that there is something called coaching. But so I just wanted to clarify that there was peace there for me. That's great. And um, so thank you for asking that. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about your transition then. Because okay. if once the recognition happens, and I can totally relate, I was dressing people before there was a term for image consulting. Yes. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was doing it. And then all of a sudden the name appears and you say, oh wait, that's what I'm doing. Yes. So how yes. did it work for you? Well, I actually stopped working as a coach, uh, as, a, as an agent, because I had two amazing sons. And I looked up, and my schedule and my work up schedule was very demanding. And I realized that I was not given the time as a mother and a parent. And I took about a year to work things out, but I did. And I was at home for quite a few years. And one day, I looked up, and I felt that something was missing for me. Mm -hmm. I needed some mental stimulation. Not that my sons weren't giving it to me, but I needed <laughs> sure, a, a, another charge. And I decided to go back to work. And I didn't know what that looked like, what it was, but I knew that I was going to go and do something that was family friendly. And those were okay. the operative words. And the very next day after I announced that to my family, I got a call that they were looking for a director of a new office for the American Cancer Society. Oh. And, I, and would I be interested? And I said, yes. And they asked me to get my resume. I had never had a resume in my life because everyone in my industry knew me. Sure. So I had to put together a resume and I ended up getting the job and I announced that it has to be family friendly. It turned out not to be that family friendly. <laughs> However, it allowed my kids to be involved volunteering and doing work out in the community, promoting uh, cancer awareness and healthy eating and physical fitness. And to this day, they are very physically fit yeah. from those presentations. But after a while, I looked up and I realized I love what I'm doing. I love the organization. I think I want to be a volunteer and I'd like to go off now, there off, and do something that would be really using my skills in a different way. And I worked with a coach. It was amazing. And I really tapped into resources within me that I didn't know existed. And I thought, as I'm sitting there working with her and what I want to do next, I realized this is what I wanted to do. 
And so I went to um, IPEC, International Professional Excellence in Coaching School, mm -hmm. and got my certification. And I hadn't had a blue book since I was in college. We had to write <laughs> finals and we had orals and all of that. And I said, oh my goodness gracious. But it was, I knew that this was what I needed. And I found that piece of me that was missing. And so when I de was trying to figure out what I was going to call my business, and I thought, huh, I found it, missing piece. And I realized that many people are looking for that something that's missing, and they know when they get it, all the ducks line up. I also, uh, became aware of we have so many treasures within us. And there, when we were made, everything that we need to do whatever we're here to do is already within us. And it's just helping, helping clients get to and dig within to find those, those resources and start using them. And that becomes another piece of the missing piece. That's amazing. And I know we all hear this, right? Everything you have is within you. Everything you need, just go seek within. It's impossible to do it without help. Absolutely. So how Absolutely. do you find that works for you with your clients? Well, first of all, because I worked with a coach, and still from time to time I work with a coach mm -hmm. myself, so that I see the fruit of the labor. And so then I have those expectations from others because I've been through the process. You can't ask somebody to do something that you haven't experienced exactly. yourself. And I also see that we're constantly growing, growing, growing. You know, I called my mother one day and she had to be about 678 at the time. And I said, so what are you doing? She said, I'm on my way out the door. Let me call you when I get back. And I said, where are you going? She said, for a job interview. Oh. So she was going for a job interview for a kindergarten teacher at 78 years old. Who better? And guess what? She got the job. Oh my now, my mother had never been a kindergarten <laughs> teacher. She had been a director of a preschool for many years. But to teach kindergarten on the floor with the blocks and the reading and the blah, blah, blah. But I realized she was growing herself at 78 years old, delving into another area of education than she had been exposed to. So that confirmed for me that we're constantly, constantly growing. And with that awareness, how do you use more of what you have? to constantly grow yourself. And I think that the ageless, timeless piece is so meaningful to all of us mm. because honestly, as I get older, I recognize that I couldn't have done the things then that I'm doing now. I didn't have my past experience to build on. And like you, I work with coaches and it's very, I find it so fulfilling to find someone who is just a couple steps ahead of you, mm -hmm. who mm. can help you leapfrog mm -hmm. into that next place, especially if you want to do something new that you've never done before. Well, you know, I also see when I'm sitting with my clients, I hear what they say, but more importantly, I hear what they don't say. Mm -hmm. And what they don't say is that, that really important piece that will really help catapult them. And so with that, I use that as part of my, a tool that I am working with my clients so that I can take them from here to here and bring that together. Mm -hmm. And I know, I'm, I'm assuming, your clients are already very accomplished. They've already yes. achieved quite a bit. Yes. yes. So they're looking to really get to the peak and maybe it's, you know, millimeters, maybe it's inches or centimeters, but it's not, it, it may be a leap, but it may just be that little bit that makes the difference. Is that what you find? Well, you know what? First of all, I find that people who are successful seek help so that they can become even more successful. Yes. They have accomplished something and they know what that feels like and they don't want to sit on their laurels. They want to keep accomplishing. Mm -hmm. 
And so therefore, it's exciting to work with somebody because I call it their coachable. Uh -huh. And um, they appreciate the support and the partnership because I look at it as we're partnering with one another so that you can realize whatever it is that you want to experience next. Help make me better. Speaking yes. of which, you wrote a book. Yes. Which I love. First of all, it's incredibly beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and I feel like it represents you so well. And it's your turn uncovering the best you now. So what was your process for the book and how do you use it? Okay, so when I wrote that book, something kept saying, Cynthia, sit down and write a book. Yeah. I was, it was daunting to me, daunting. The idea of sitting down and writing something. You don't sit much, do you? <laughs> and so <laughs> I said, okay, so this was a challenge to me, but it also, I thought, if I'm going to do something that's daunting, why am I doing this? And the why is important for whatever you do. Sure. And I realized I am touching my client's life in the most amazing way, but everyone does not have access to a coach. Mm -hmm or even the awareness that coaches exist for them. Sure. And so I thought, if I write a book that they can personalize, and what I say by personalizing, I start with a preface, you know, when you have a book, but I said, you write what you want to get out of this book. So right there, it's giving them the opportunity to think, what would I like to experience? Where do I want to go with myself? And they write that. And then I give 22 life lessons. And each life lesson is so simple. They're, it's like a, a parable or something. Little stories that happened in my life, but something anyone can relate to. And then there are questions at the end, and you sit down. And there's something powerful about writing your thoughts down. So you sit down, and you answer the questions for yourself. And by the end of the book, you have made some changes in your life. And you've opened up doors, you've, the awareness is kicking in. And I've even had people contact me about coaching because the, now that they've experienced this, they wanna take it to another level. That's perfect. So, how, so just knowing that this book could help somebody allowed me to sit down and write it. So Cynthia, if people wanna find you and learn more or coach with you, how do they do that? Well, I have a um, website, and it's www.missingpeacecoaching.com. And notice the piece is P-E-A-C-E. -E. They can go on there and contact me, or my office number is 310-995-7769. And um, you can get me on LinkedIn. Cynthia Oraduba, Missing Peace Coaching. Okay. So we'll we'll find you. Yes. And we'll put all that information on the screen so it'll make it easy for our viewers to find you. Thank you so Terrific. much for coming in. It it's is been a, a pleasure. pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Oh,